Hi everyone, it's Natalie here, and um, <clears throat> coming to you again for the uh, weekly reading, the general reading. So this week we're looking at Sunday, the 8th of December, <clears throat> through Saturday the 14th of December. And uh, full disclosure, this is my birthday week. So my birthday this week is Friday the 13th, um, which happens every now and again. And I generally tend to view that as being um, really fortuitous, really fortuitous. So, um, and um, what's the word I want here where it's like really a good thing besides fortuitous? I can't remember. It'll probably come back to me. Anyhow... Um, this week, we're once again going to be working with the um, Enchanted Forest Tarot. And amazingly, I was going to go in and look for our, um, <laughs> our significator, but it was already on top. So we're going to go ahead and elect the White Heart as our um, significator and shuffle the cards. Before it continues to give us all the cards we would want to read, we're going to go ahead and do the first operation. Just to note that there was a sliding card on this pile. Again, this deck may not function the way a lot of others do for me, but we may find our significator in that pile. Yeah, they're not in this pile. Okay. Nope. Yeah, it is in this pile. Interesting. Okay, it would have to be. Also, the biggest pile. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot. Yeah, there it is. I have a feeling there will be a lot um, coming out this week. Um, a lot of cards. Big, big story to be told, perhaps. Um, so this is the Pentacles pile. And the Pentacles pile is... Um, Oh, the pentacle pile relates once again to money, finances. Um, it's been coming up, up a lot in the last few weeks, actually, a lot. Um, this pile, I mean. So um, we're looking at issues that are to do with uh, money, finance, um, could be related to charitable contributions, taxes, anything to do with the stuff of the world, the material things of the world, gifts, gift buying. Um, all of those are things that would come up under this pile. So, so too would um, anything to do with your home, you know, your home, your physical body, um, health, any health related things. Those are all pentacles pile issues. Um, and ultimately, whatever we do find this week that comes up, um, we're going to be able to solve our problems best through sensing, okay? And when I think about sensing, sensing is is about um, the five senses and, and coming out of the head and into the body and into 
more of a being rather than a doing, right? If what we do, which we see in the pentacles later, you know, as we move further and further along um, in that suit, it is very much about doing. Um, a lot of it is about doing, but the being part has to be there first or the doing becomes meaningless. So really, as we as we start looking at how to handle the things that come up this week, coming back to a sense of, okay, I need to just have a sense of my own being. I need to feel into my body, feel into my senses, become very, very aware and aligned with the environment around me and what I'm hearing, what I'm smelling, what I'm tasting, how does, you know, where are the aches or pains or sensations, pleasant or unpleasant in my body. Okay. Okay, and now for our Menti Oracle card. So um, last week we were keeping our own counsel. Um, let us see what we're doing this week. So our big jumper um, was this card. I hold purity in high esteem. So I'm going to say that purity is about probably going to have something to do in this deck with integrity, um, alignment, alignment of purpose and intention. Um, yeah. Let's just see what we've got. Okay, I've had a chance to just kind of read read through um, the description of the card so that I can, you know, boil it down a little. Her, um, as we've as we've seen, you know, her explanations of things are often really deep and and very in depth. Um, so yeah, this is very much about. Um, you know, keeping the exterior, you know, the body, the temple of the body, um, relatively pure and clear in order that our spirit is clear. Okay. So, um, yeah, looking at it from that perspective, um, there are a few things here that I think are really of value to read. So she says, um, out of context, the notion of this ideal may evoke feelings and memories tied to overzealous philosophies on chastity, abstinence, or other dogmatic tenets of belief. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but contextualized as an ideal in relationship with perennial philosophy and the embodiment of nature as manifested energies of the universe, we may be reminded that purity is something to be held in esteem so that the inner spirit is refined enough for the soul of the natural world to reverberate through conscious awareness. Okay. A synthesis of Hindu and Egyptian philosophies may be found in the ideal of an embodied nature, which purifies the spirit and allows um, the Neter, or Godhead, to spin the wheels of energy, moving us forward into our greatest potential. So um, it is also, yes, it is saying by taking care of our bodies. You remember I said about the this pile could be about health um, and well-being. So that will be definitely something to contemplate as we look at what's going to come up this week. Um, uh, forgive me, there are a lot of text messages. I'm suddenly getting... Um, bombarded with texts, of course. Um, it's been quiet all day. <laughs> and then suddenly when I pull up this camera, it's, it's all, it's, everybody needs to talk. Um, so yeah, this, uh, this will tell us that, you know, moving forward through the week, taking care of the body and taking care of the needs of the body um, in order to remain fully embodied is going to be a big part of how we um, how we address the pentacle related stuff coming up, 
You know, it's going to affect the way that we sense and feel things. And that in turn will affect our perception. So <clears throat> very, very uh, helpful information there in terms of working with that pentacles energy, you know, pentacle energy or earth energy this week. Um, okay, let's go ahead and set up our cards and I will turn off my cell phone in the meantime. Which should help. <laughs> Sometimes it has to be done. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so <clears throat> I got started trying to count and it was a disaster because I was going to try and explain what I'm doing instead of just doing it. So um, <laughs> I'm going to have to make a, a separate video for those who are really interested in how a general reading works and what it's comprised of um, rather than trying to do it within, you know, while I'm actually performing the reading. That's actually kind of hard to do. It's, it's easier if you go in kind of thinking, okay, I'm going to instruct this. So um, I'm just going to do the, the reading of the cards and we'll start again. And in the meantime, I will scratch out the cards that just came up because they are not the right ones. All right, so starting with the Fool. The Fool is three. So counting the Fool, one, two, three, we get the Nine of Boons. So we're actually starting this week with a pentacle card, which is rather nice. Okay, so the nine is a nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, wow. We have suspension or the hanged person. Okay, and then we get the nine. What are we looking at? The suspension. That's also elemental. So one, two, three. Ace of spells. Aces are elevens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, the green mother. She is a planet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Six of spells. Interestingly, we end up with a lot of the same cards, just a slightly different order. Uh, six counts for six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, not as many cards as I would have expected this week. Very interesting. So we only have five. <clears throat> um, Wow, a lot, lot fewer than I would have expected. So we're starting with the Nine of Boons. Hanged uh, Suspension, we'll just call it Suspension. Ace of Spells, Green Mother, and Six of Spells. So it looks to be a pretty fortuitous week. Okay, so this week we have enough space <laughs> to really see all of our cards um, laid out the way they are. We have a really interesting um, set of cards and juxtapositions here. So we're starting off with the Nine of Boons, um, which is ultimately the Nine of Pentacles, and finishing with the Six of Spells or the Six of Wands. So there's a little victory at the end. And it's coming after Solitude, and we've got something new at the helm, right, or at the at the pinnacle of the um, of the reading. So we've also got these two majors juxtaposed against one another. They're very, very different. Um, fascinating, really fascinating. So to start with, <clears throat> we have the nine of boons and this lovely little brownie 
is happy in her home alone, seeking alone time. So spending time alone is how she's able to look after herself. It's how she's able to renew herself, look after nature, um, <clears throat> commune with all of the different beings that she shares her space with. And she feels to me very, very much. It's interesting that this is such a green card. Um, and we have so much green, including the green mother um, in our spread this week. But, um, you know, the solitude that she engages in here is very much about her ability to look after her own interests. So I feel like we're being called, all of us, to spend a little bit more time alone in solitude um, to get a greater sense of what's happening in our lives. I also feel like this is about the home as well. There's a little broom back here. So maybe we're also being called to take care of our home space. You know, what's happening in our home? Do we need to purify our home? Do we need to clean the home? Because <clears throat> as much as this one, pardon me one second. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> as much as this one is about the body perhaps the home is 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 also kind of a psychological representative of the body so um yeah i mean it, it, when we're busy and it's a busy time of year even though there's decorations and everything else is it possible well, there if, you, if you're not me? I don't really decorate for Christmas. It's a lot. Um, <laughs> it just feels like a lot to deal with. Um, but if you, you know, if, you're, if your home is not reflecting um, a state of calm and ease, um, what could be done to, to help that? So maybe we need to start the week by just bringing order and calm into the home. And that's very important because we need to take some time um, whether it's it's imposed on us through, I feel like this could potentially indicate like for some people maybe an illness. Um, sometimes we can't do, we can't change our perspective any other way um, other than through the choice to, um, you know, retreat from the world <clears throat> in order to, to get a greater sense of what's happening. Sometimes we just have to submit to the need for quiet and space. <coughs> and sometimes we just need, um, sometimes we just need more time to ourselves. And if we don't take it willingly in order to, um, revive and refresh and come back home to ourselves and to our bodies and minds, the world will impose it on us. So it will often do that in the form of illness. So for some of us, that may be what's happening. Um, for a lot of us, it may be that we just voluntarily need to take some added extra quiet time this week to be reflective, to be still, um, and to give ourselves space for a lot of changes that are being made or that are coming up. Um, again, it, it's the pentacles pile this week, right? So taking the time to sense and feel and be fully embodied, um, it's going to be very crucial to our, our ability to feel at home in the world, um, and to be able to move on. And we'll need that because there is something new that is coming in. There's a new energy being created. Um, it may be in the form of, of starting a new project that we wanted to look at or um, bring about in the coming week. It may be um, starting a new phase in life. Um, I guess I guess for, you know, I guess having a birthday during the week would, would count as that, but we're also bringing a lot of things to fruition. It's a full moon week. So, you know, the full moon is letting go. And sometimes the letting go is also the recognition that there's something new that's about to start. So what's coming up, you know, what's, what's coming up that may be um, brought to fruition? What's the new thing that, that may come out of something coming to fruition. Yeah, we've got this little wyvern here that's blowing his, his magic onto that magic wand and crystal in order to make it happen. Um, so after taking this time to, 
to really enjoy some solitude and self-care, <clears throat> to really shut off from the world. Um, interestingly, in order to be able to even do this reading, I had to shut my phone off <laughs> and basically say, no, I can't take any calls. I, I need the space. Um, you know, I can't take any more text messages. Please stop blowing up my phone with your group texts. Um, people I haven't heard from in eight months, etc. Right. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a very, it's a very necessary thing. So this could also just be about radio silence for a little while and shutting off the phone, shutting off um, electronic communication in order to just cocoon and regain perspective in order to know what that new thing is that's about to come out. Um, there was something I remember in the description of <clears throat> the, yeah, in the this one, let's see, a new point of view, um, mystical messages, a retreat from daily life, heeding an inner call. Um, Yeah, that's true. There may be a sacrifice. So there may be, you know, as we look at um, what are we giving up in the coming week, you know, with that full moon, what are we releasing, letting go of? She says here, suspension signifies a time of surrender to a higher purpose. There are times for action and there are times when it's best to stay still and deepen in wisdom. Your soul is ready for its next stage of growth. This may involve a sacrifice of worldly ambitions or well-laid plans. So... Um, yeah, yeah, I feel like that, that very much may be the case. It's also the full moon energy can be an awful lot, um, getting extra space and time just for calm and quiet around that new moon can be crucial. Uh, but it's also going to be crucial to do that and see what needs to be released and let go of and changed and shifted in order to be able to know how to bring it about. And that once we begin to know how to bring that about, we know what's what's coming and what's going to be new as a result of that suspension. We can then begin work on nurturing it and growing it, right? So with our um, Green Mother... You know, we have the possibility of, of taking this new life <clears throat> and growing it, nurturing it, allowing it to flourish, um, and creating greater space for it. So that's a lot in one week, folks. <laughs> There's a lot of that in one week. But if you're feeling that need um, to take the time, take the quiet, take it. It's, it's definitely a symbol, uh, a signal to you that, that this is what's necessary. You know, keeping in mind, too, this is what's the main themes of this week. But week to week, I really see an over, um, um, what's, uh, it, it, there's a, an overlap between one week to the next. There's a lot of new stuff that comes in, but then there are themes that continue to be carried over week to week. Um so as we're looking at what we want to grow, perhaps in the new year, um, you know, this this time to reflect and, and, and seek solitude is really necessary. And it also requires coming back to the body. How is my body feeling? And what are the things that I want for myself, for my way of being in the next year? Um, that may also be part of it. The body is definitely part of our reading this week, right? We <laughs> We definitely... Um, have the body in the home um, as, as a big part of what we're doing. Uh, and whatever it is, know that it's going to be successful. Interestingly, this is uh, in the Ace of Spells. This is a wyvern. And in the Six of Spells, we've got a little baby wyvern that's being grown, right? So we, we're representing, or that's being hatched, rather. So it's interesting, too, that we're looking at this space of creating something new um, creating the space to be able to nurture it and offer it the love and support that it needs in order to come to fruition. And then recognizing too, that it, you know, the seeds that we plant this week, they're going to come to great fruition. There will be great success in doing it. It will be totally worth our time, um, to invest in that because it is going to yield tremendous results, you know, new life, new growth, new possibilities, um, and a new way of being. And it's really cute because in her book, um, 
this is one of my favorite details about this card. Um, Linnea Weatherstone says that this little dragon is puffing a little, a little happiness. It's letting go of a little puff of happiness into the air. So, um, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of possibility for all of us moving forward. So um, as we go into the week, this week, it seems to me that the time we spend or invest, you know, coming back to the body, coming back to the senses, spending necessary time alone, tending to the home and, and home and hearth, uh, tending to the inner body, you know, the inner self through quiet meditation, um, journaling, time spent alone, time spent reflecting is going to help us bring this new energy uh, that we are wanting in our lives forward while sim simultaneously realizing what we need to let go of in order for that to happen. Um, doing this is going to help create the sort of nurturing, loving space and possibility uh, for that to happen for that to take place and we can we can move forward knowing and trusting that our efforts are going to bring success that they will bring about new things um a new growth all right everybody so thank you so much and um i wish all of you the most beautiful week okay take care and i'll see you next time bye